The JP poll is our own internal power rating that gets pumped out from the model. It is not a ranking system. It's nothing like the AP poll, obviously, based on what you're about to see. And we go 25 to one. I go through it pretty quickly. So whew, let's pull it up because man, I've got some explaining to do and I try and explain the model as best I can. 25 through 21, Wisconsin, NC State, Iowa State, Miami, and Florida State. Wisconsin has this loss to Washington State on their resume. And everyone's frowning about it because it's Washington State. Uh, I happen to think, and our model happens to think, Washington State's just a much better team than you do. And it keeps, it keeps rating Wisconsin a little bit higher than some of the other power rating systems I've seen out there. Iowa State and Baylor is going to be interesting this week. We got Iowa State at 23. I think we have Baylor like 19 or 20 or something like that. I'm about to see. But that's going to be a really good comparative test and analysis for us. Uh, FSU continues to climb at number 21. All right, let's take a look at number 20 through number 16. Like I said, Baylor right there at number 20. They lost to Brigham Young. Not a big deal. BYU, some of you know them as. Kentucky's 19. LSU's 18. Cincy is 17. A&M is at 16. Now, Kentucky, as you can clearly see, we don't have as high as the AP. K Kentucky's at number eight in the AP, okay? It's not disrespectful for me to say what I'm about to say. Kentucky's not one of the 10 best teams in the country on a power rating scale. There are far more than 10 teams that would be favored against Kentucky on a neutral field tomorrow. That doesn't mean anything. Kentucky routinely beats teams as an underdog. But all this is based on is who would be favored against who tomorrow. So, with that in mind, that's why Kentucky's down at 19 and why a team like A&M, even though they've already gotten a loss, is up at 16 and A&M hasn't looked good. Only point is, if they played Kentucky tomorrow, they'd be favored. And from there, would play the game and Kentucky would probably pull the upset. Okay, let's go 15 through 11. This is where it starts to get a little interesting. So Mississippi State fell a few spots. They lost last week to LSU. They didn't fall because they lost. They, f they fell because their expected passing game output was woefully inept relative to what the model thought we would see from them. And so, as a result, that's why they got dinged a little bit. I think, Jesse, I think this is the first time we've had Ole Miss power rated above Mississippi State this year. Ole Miss is, they're in ascension mode. They're playing bad teams, but they're beating bad teams soundly. So we're not going to, certainly not going to punish them for that. In fact, the model's rewarding them. Oklahoma State's one of the sneakiest, quietest, potentially really good teams in America. They're at number 13. Texas is at 12. It is what it is with the quarterback situation right now. They continue to buy themselves time. They've got Texas Tech this week. That line, I think, is up to six right now in favor of the Longhorns. That's in Lubbock, though. USC, still, to me, a pretty tough team to figure out. They're at 11. You know, USC goes to Oregon State, one of our favorite teams, this Saturday. And the line on that game is seven, six or seven. Let's just keep an eye on it. Model. I haven't moved on it yet. The model, this is kind of like what Friday Night Lines is like. The model has Oregon State at about a 60% cover probability in that game. So check out Friday Night Lines at Late Kick Josh on Instagram. All right, top 10 time. Oh, what happened to Clemson? Okay, so let me straighten my mic out for this one. Clemson, well, let me first tell you, Arkansas is number 10 for those on podcast. And Clemson's number nine. And Clemson beat Louisiana Tech last week. They were, what, what were they? They were number five the week before. So how did they fall four times or four spots when they won last week? The explanation here is pretty simple, actually. By the time we get to week four, each week further we get into the season, we are lessening the weight of preseason ratings, and we are increasing the weight of ratings that account for data ingested during the season. So basically what you're seeing is the last real week where we layer in preseason default ratings that we put in for Clemson. And now you're seeing more what a true power rating would be for them if you just took their performance this year so far. It's like 80-20 at this point, I think. So that's why Clemson fell, because they haven't been all that particularly impressive and powerful this year. They've won, they've done what they need to do, but they haven't done it thoroughly enough to warrant anything above a number nine. Utah's number eight, pretty much unchanged. Tennessee is number seven, and Penn State is number six. Both of those teams up three spots from last week. Now, obviously, when you look at Penn State at six and Tennessee at seven, I'm going to look in the comment section. I'm going to get some pushback on that, and here's what it'll sound like. Penn State's not a, a top seven team. 
Tennessee's not a top seven team. Well, that's very relative to the particular situation we're in. Uh, the, the value of being number six doesn't just carry year to year to year. So my simple follow-up is going to be, if not them, who? Is Utah definitely better than them? Is Clemson, is Arkansas, are they definitely better than them? USC, some would argue, are they definitely better than them? There's no one definitely better than them. I mean, there's no definitive argument you're going to make. So there's a big drop-off. I'm about to show you exactly how big the drop-off is in a second. There's a big drop-off between the top two or three and then this kind of hodgepodge of teams in the five, six, seven, eight range. There is no one definitively better in that group of teams you see there than Penn State and Tennessee. There just isn't. All right, let's go. Top five. Check out Michigan. They fell one spot. Oklahoma got bumped up two spots. And that, again, is the model starting to ingest a lot more current and a lot less preseason default. So Oklahoma, for the first time, is as high as number four. The top three are unchanged. It's Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, one, two, and three. Let me give you an idea of how wide these gaps are. This is according to the model. The Georgia Bulldogs would be favored by two points against Alabama neutral field tomorrow, three and a half points against Ohio State, 13 points against Oklahoma. There is a 10-point drop-off, essentially, between or a nine-and-a-half-point drop-off between Ohio State and Oklahoma. So there's your first tier. Here's another idea of how wide that tier is. If you took the gap between Georgia and Oklahoma, the gap between number one and number four, it's as wide as the gap between number four and number 24. So the next 20 teams, the gap between those 20 teams is the same size as the gap between number one and number four. So yes, there is still, at least according to the model, a pretty pronounced tier there. Uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get some movement coming up. You know, Georgia's still. I'm not gonna say they haven't been tested. They ju they've just passed every test with flying colors. Bama's got Vandy this week, and then it really starts again for Bama. They're gonna go to Arkansas next week. That's the CBS game of the week. Certainly in contention for the every given Saturday tour. Ohio State is in a peculiar situation. They're playing a game this week against Wisconsin that. In the preseason, you, you may have circled. But then when Wisconsin didn't look any different so far this year than they normally do, it kind of let the air out of the balloon. And I don't hear anyone talking about the game. We're not going to break it down tonight because I don't see a path for Wisconsin to win the game. So we only break down games where I think there is a path. But yet the lines in the mid to upper teens, we've seen bigger underdogs than that pull outright upsets already this year. Just interesting. Just let's keep an eye on it. Just interesting. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Make sure you like the video and please subscribe to the channel. Not just for me. That's how we keep this entire thing free.